welcome again guys welcome to another session of shomu's biology presents biology math problems and in this video we'll be talking about another problem regarding restriction mapping and you know in very first video we'll be, we have already been discussed about certain important aspects of restriction mapping problem and how to solve those problems this is problem number two so i will highly encourage you to go back uh, if you don't uh, see those videos so just go back and watch the first video on restriction mapping problem then come here because I have discussed uh, the sequential stages and processes to how to get the idea of restriction mapping there so just uh, solve that one and then come back and look at this video so here we are going to solve another problem it says as a part of undergraduate research project a student was attempting to construct a restriction map for the plasmid PAC 23 PUC23 using the restriction enzymes ECOR1 and BAMH1. After carrying out both single and double enzyme digest reactions and electrophoresing each re reaction mix through an agarose gel, the picture below is obtained showing the number of DNA fragments produced in each reaction along with the size of the each fragment. So from this information, construct a restriction map of PAC23 for enzyme ECOR1 and BAMH1. Now remember, like all the other restriction enzyme and restriction mapping problem, in this case also they provided the data. In generally, they provide the data in uh, the tabular form, but here they provide the data in the form of electrophoresis gel picture to make it more, more realistic and enthusiastic for the science learners. That's a good idea, just simple representation. But all the rest of the things are same uh, for this one, just like the previous problem that we have solved. So if you look at here, in this case, we need to construct that, uh, that uh, table form so that we can easily solve the problem. So what we know, we can put it here, the enzyme name, and we'll put it here, the length of the fragment, right? So we need to put those two values there. So if you look at the enzyme name, one is eco R1, BAM, sorry, BAM H1. And the third one is eco R1 plus BAM H1. Okay, so these are the three different species that we use to construct the map. Now, what kind of map we've got here? Eco R1, we get the length of 20 kb. Using BAM H1, we get 11 kb. Using eco R1, sorry, using BAM H1, we get 111 kb fragment. So let me. Let me put it here a little bit. Okay. So, using remember how to construct this. So, you can see here uh, in 20 kb, we have only one band of eco R1. So, we get eco R1 only 20 kb fragment, only one fragment, no other fragment. So, 20 kb 1. In BAM H1, we have one 11 kb fragment, one 6 kb fragment, and one 3 kb fragment. So, 11, 6, and 3 kb fragments. So, let me put the kb in the top so that. I don't need to write it again. And in third case, sorry, I should put it there. Yeah. In third case, if we treat it with eco R1 and BAM H1 both together, we got one at 8 kb, one at 6 kb, one at 3 kb. 8, 6, and 3. So this is how we need to construct uh, the table form. Remember, they can also give us the question in this table form, or they can give us in pictorial form. If they give, us, uh, give this picture in pictorial form, in that case, we need to construct our own table by looking at the agarose gel. In that case, they will test your ability to look at an agarose gel and construct the, I mean, uh, this table. That is another credit uh, for that purpose. So once you do that, let's solve the problem. Now remember the different stages that you've discussed earlier. Stage is one. The stage one is uh, to find out the total length of the plasmid. That's very, very important, guys. Once you find the total length of the plasmid, then second thing is the place, the first enzyme cut site, which is, remember, having very lowest number of fragments generated. In this case of our example, we have eco R1, which is producing only one fragment. So we will put the eco R1 site very first in that plasmid drawing. After that, what we need to construct? The third thing is to compare the outcomes of double cut and the single cut with maximum fragment. So in this case, we have the outcome of double cut is this one, this whole set, and outcome of single cut with maximum fragment is this BAM H1 cut. So we'll compare them and we'll find 
uh, the important insight so that we can draw that uh, draw the draw the diagram so let's do this let's do it here now so let's put the values let's yeah this is the circle not a good circle but it will work in this case what we know is that first we put the the enzyme with only one card that is eco r1 and first thing to construct is uh, the length of uh, the plasmid and you know uh, with eco r1 it cuts only one region so using eco r1 this plasmid can be linear or linearized due to the cut of eco r1 and one side so we get a linear plasmid after the treatment of eco r1 we get a 20 kb fragment so in turn the whole plasmid is nothing but a 20 kb mole so it's 20 kb the total length of the plasmid remember in bamation let's co co compare that 11 plus 6 17 plus 3 20 8 plus 6 14 plus 3 so here now 8 plus 6 14 plus 3 this is 17 remember so what does that mean that means though this is 17 but the you know the total number i mean the total length of the plasmid is 20 kb so definitely there is some other three 3 kb long fragment is obviously there and we un we can't write both the 3 here because we get only one band we get only one band for the 3 here remember for this 3 and you can see here this band is dark what does that mean darker i mean darker than other bands and according to our own calculation we also know there must be 2 3 kb fragment instead of 1 and that's completely tallied if you look at in this picture that yes there are two 3 kb fragments that's why the fragment here is dark remember if we if we produce 30 3 kb fragments for example they are going to end up in the same region of the gel but they will produce a broader band that's what's happening here as there are two 3 kb fragments the band is darker and broader right so for eco r1 and bam h1 there is 8 6 3 and another 3 remember this is the very first thing that you should know by looking uh, at this problem there right and that's how you need you need to apply your biology knowledge that's how i like this type of problems because it will test your knowledge in all the different dimensions so once you know this let's now do the rest of the thing that is let's place the the first enzyme having the least cut that is eco r1 having only one cut so let's put it here the eco r1 let's put here eco r1 cut side and if we cut here the rest of the part is 20 kb now now the said you know remember this third step what it suggests comparing the outcomes of double cut and the single cut with maximum fragment that is uh, comparing bam h1 and eco r1 bam h1 both cuts so if we look at here we have a 3 we have a 3 we have a 6 6 and 11 you know 6 is common in both the case 3 is common in the both the case and what we end up here is in bam h1 if if we treat this plasmid with the bam h1 we will get remember this thing bam h1 we will get one 11 kb fragment and if we treat it with bam h1 and eco r1 both we end up with remember here one 8 kb fragment and one 3 kb fragment sorry one 8 and one 3 kb fragment so what does that mean if we cut it with only bam h1 it it, it produces 11 kb fragment if we cut it with bam h1 and eco r1 it gets 1 8 1 3 and we also know that eco r1 there is only eco uh, uh, one eco r1 cut site in this plasmid that means there is some this eco r1 site is somewhere middle in the bam h1 fragment that's why the 11 kb split it is splitted into a 8 and a 3 that is giving rise to 11 right so so similarly like just like the previous one we need to put the values here remember here we get, go for bam h1 8 let's say bam h1 this is 3 right so we got two different segments of bam h1 right there so now let's compare the events we have if we treat it with only bam h1 we get 11 then we should got a 6 again a bam h1 cut site 
and then finally we got a 3 so this is let's say 3 right now let's say whether it's tallied or not for eco bar 1 we get only one side 3 plus 6 9 plus 3 12 plus 8 20 it's fine and if we treat the eco r1 and bam h1 we got 1 8 1 3 1 6 and another 3 as we got 2 3 but still we get one band which is darker so according to this picture everything that we've seen in this diagram is justified so as it is justified we can say yes we have perfectly drawn Puck 23 vector drawing and a map for the enzymes eco R1 and BAM H1. That's how you need to draw this restriction map, guys. Thank you.